Hello there and welcome back to the Amp Trilogy Retrospective and finally it's the final finale and we're going to be taking a look at the most anticipated game on our list which will be Amp Free. If we were to compare these box arts you can easily tell which one pops out the most in 2D fruity colour. But does that fruitiness contrast into the game itself and how does it fare amongst these two? Amped 1 had a rocky start but was playable, had an amazing soundtrack and was still fun. Amped 2 improved upon everything from the first and the gameplay was super duper although there wasn't a crazy amount of content. But what about 3? Will this be the best in the trilogy or will it come out a scathing mess? We're gonna find out. Amp 3 came out in 2005 and was one of the first games released on the Xbox 360. Yes, this is still an Xbox exclusive franchise. It was published by 2K Sports and developed by Indie Built, and you can immediately tell they were either running out of ideas, or had a midlife crisis, or had a shitload of drugs, or just wanted to let out their creative ventures because this game is nuts. Five second montage please. Mortality. Just finishing my workout. Uh, my mom says video games are worse than drugs. Well, comparing this to the other games that took themselves a bit seriously, Amphrey has gone off the rails because I forgot to press the grind button in time. And you can already tell as we enter the menu. Lots of wonderfully 80s style colours with hot pink, a line with black and white, graphic designs that produce collage art. It's a nice main menu that's vibrant and while there's a lot to consume on the screen, it is still alluring. It's more engaging than the previous menus which are your basic generic option screens. Each option varies and you could leave it on for ages. Plus the music is pure elevator music that is relaxing and overly mediocre. I love it. We're invited into a new environment and I appreciate the new approach, but I don't think you're ready for what is to be unveiled. The story begins with a retro arcade style cutscene of some macho Pac-Man picking up different coloured sprite characters whilst dodging green shoot shoots and getting to the end. Yeah, this is still Amp Free alright. We enter the actual game and you meet your team of characters that will tell along with you through the adventure. You got J-Dog who wants to become the hippity hoppity rapper of the century, Hunter who is the cool rad chick, Sebastian the large and beautiful meditative guru who has a very zen accent and approach to snowboarding, and Wiener Boy, he's the cool dork in the group. And then there's you, in a body costume, which is a great way to let you play before customising your character. Blinded by the light plays as you roll like a rover in the night, but I actually mean snowboarding down this large slope to get a feel of the controls, which I'll get into a bit later. Through the overall journey, lots of crazy stuff happens, but to boil it down into a nice simple soup, this is your crew of buddies, and in the first act you all decide to save up for a trip. A special place of snowboarding paradise. Throughout this, Wiener Boy sets up a track for you to learn the basics of grinding on rails, using this new sled mechanic which is pretty weird getting used to. I have more ease controlling an egg on a spoon than this. Speaking of eggs, there's an easter egg competition where you collect eggs down a slope, but as you save up for money, someone steals the money and the group disbands and it's up to you to get some work and start meeting some really... Really weird people in many forms of styles of animation and visual cutscenes. You scramble up to get cash, there's secret snowmobile agents, Russian game show talking hands. I, I, I can't believe I just said that. j Dog starts a rapping career, there's a mind meddling video game developed by Colonotronic Arts. Very funny. And there's a hooded villain known as Baron Von Havoc, who lives in a zeppelin and is the evil of evil. And you have to stop him. That was such a jumbled mess, and in a way the story is, but it probably knows this and doesn't take itself seriously. If it did, I'd be concerned. The main group of friends have wide personalities and made their chemistry together unique, fun and engaging. You'll have a favourite, and mine is definitely Sebastian who is an ultimate chill guy. They all banter off each other, and while they may be stereotypical and cliche as anything, it bodes well and the voice actors make them a bodacious team. I mean, this is the kind of voice and look I would expect a wiener boy to be. Yeah, awesome. J-Dog is my least favourite due to him being very up himself and cringy. Sounds a little shaky, dude. What kind of sponsor is going to sign up you and me? Hey, maybe you're okay with just hanging out, but not me. I'm on my way to the top. I mean, I'll bring the rest of the crew along for the ride, but I'm just being real. Let me break it down for you. 
Player One, being you, isn't something spectacular, he's just a silent protagonist who says sentences every now and then. The main meat is the side characters that you meet in the best and utmost creative cutscenes you'll probably ever see in your life. They're obscure, they're weird, zany, and gives this game more oomph and enlarged sense of engagement aside from the main gameplay, which again, I'll get to soon. There'll be a Canadian puppet who wants you to find a yeti in the mountains, a business pig that wants you to do some stunts that could cause a lot of damage, Russian game show hosts, and then there's pink haired lover of unicorns named Dandelion who is obsessed with player one. It keeps you guessing on what's to come and gets you excited to complete each act of mission objective. The amount of styles and variation for these cutscenes are astonishing and are worthy of a purchase alone. It's like drinking an energy drink that has a shot of caffeine and snorted crushed pez while skydiving into a volcano at 500 miles per hour. Very fast paced and filled to the brim with humour, colour and of course pure wackiness. It'll range from an anime parody where the voices are over the top. The main characters like Hunter will do absolutely insane anime-isms. Someone broke into Hunter's locker and pulled all of our vacation cash. If it was those jerk guys, they would fill the word and wrath in my room. No jerk! Who search mountain for jerk guys? Spritting up for Yuki Taisho, Bishuja, beautiful danger girl with courage of Hitokiri assassin, and fighting hotness! Stop motion animation makes an appearance with action figures taking the scene, and while it's very choppy, it definitely has a creative low budget set and works well for Wiener Boy. Here's Jadar. I'm Rad. Hunter. Stop looking at my butt! Sebastian. Bro. And everyone's favorite little snow surfer, Wiener Boy. Dude, I swallowed a nickel. That's quite a crew, but isn't there someone missing? Why, yes, it's you! There's usage of puppets with the Canadian dude here and uses a green screen for outrageous backgrounds. Hola, como manzana? That's like saying, how's it going, eh? So thanks for coming down. I guess you're like a professional photographer, eh? Beauty. We could use some help. See, we're tracking this abominable snowman. This here is the only photo we got of him so far. It's kind of blurry. But this morning, there was a report of an attack. Look, someone hit us. No one hit us after you. All along. Then there's J Dog in collage rap style. Oh, may we? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, J Dog here, and I'm leading the crew. When you see me ride, you say Sakwa Boo. I got that special je ne sais quoi. Now meet the rest of Menage et Bras. Hey, my name's Alantro, and I'm the cute boy. The girls are drooling like I'm a chew toy. Come on, ladies, I'm ready to play. Just bring your brothers, cause guess what? I'm Geisha girls and Ebony sisters. I'm Coco Moto, the mojo mister. I say la vie with the mademoiselle, cause I'm sickle, sickle, silky smooth like caramel. And there's also live action as well, where they film in the studio, and you can tell that the developers are having a field day with making this game. So... How important is morale? I mean, are happy minions, or employees, really more productive? And most importantly, could I possibly care less? <laughs> eh? Is this thing on? Hello? The presentation within the cutscenes are brilliant, but how about the in-game engine's visuals? Again, it has a good style. It's more cartoony than the previous installments and has a flair of strong contrasting colours with the trees, the clothing gear and the environments, but also the snow as well. The sunset and sunrise give the snow and locations an immersive allure. I will admit that it does look dated and it's a given since it was a 2005 Xbox 360 premiere title release. The character models are rather plastic, the mouth movements while good for the time are goofy and really stretchy, the weather conditions stay the same when it's in a certain area and doesn't really change until you go to another slope. But I will admit that the skyboxes themselves while static are appealing and I could look at them for ages. The character model animations while snowboarding though are excellent. The aerial tricks are fluent and the switch to different moves are fast, snappy and a joy to view. Including when the board brushes across the snow and you see a trail form and swish as you slide left to right or keep yourself in a straight line. For me, the graphics in M2 are probably better, free as a true style, but the physics and flow in the environment felt more true to what it'd be like on a mountain. 
One of the best parts of Ant 3 are surprisingly the loading screens. Looking away from the branded border, focusing on the small box in the middle shows the strangest of strange hints, tips, recipes, bio profiles, record selections, fake advertisements and so forth. These are great and it again shows how much fun the developers were having with the overall game. Like I will never know what they were on whilst baking this pie, but I want some. It was probably Black Current Lifesavers that did it. Moving to character customization, it's rather lacking in options for hair, but has a bundle of snow gear and board designs that keep it easy to choose from. I always enjoy making my guy look the coolest, by not wearing any proper snow jackets and making him gloveless. And you can give him either a chill voice or a other stupid voice that doesn't really spice up dialogue, just the tone. It's good for what it is, but isn't too complex, and that's A-OK. -okay. It won't beat Soul Calibur or Tony Hawk's level of character customizing, that's for sure. If you thought the amount of music in Amp 1 and 2 were extensive, with a variety of teen punk to your ravaging hard rock, then Amp 3 has exceeded the music binging limits. There are so many songs that you probably wouldn't hear all of them if you casually finished the main story. I can't even remember every single track, but you can make a custom playlist if you want to keep your favourite tracks compact. There's a fair amount of unknown bands that you have probably never heard of before, and a few commons sprinkled around. And the genre variety is very big. So if you care about your hip hop, you are covered. If you want your screamo music, you are covered. If you want blues and jazz, you might be pushing it, but there's some fusion jazz somewhere. Another cool element is that you can implement your own songs that you've ripped from a CD onto the Xbox, and you can play them throughout the whole adventure, just like the other two. You'll get some good songs, some trashy songs, and really bad songs depending on your preference, but it's never going to invade your gameplay. Speaking of which, I should probably get into the main meat of the game, shouldn't I? Gameplay is tremendously addictive, although it takes a while to get used to. It's easy to swerve left and right without having to pelt the sticks back and forth. This introduces curving, which is kind of the meditative method of snowboarding. When holding the correct trigger to curve, it'll flow like butter, and you'll be streaming down the hill in style, whilst racking up the score combo. Clicking up or down on the thumbstick will make you balance for as long as you can hold it for. With acceleration, this will be the moderate speed, but it also depend how steep the slope you're traversing is. But there is an accelerate button to slide down the hills faster by holding the right trigger. It gives more airtime the faster you are, and if you want that extra nudge, combining both RT and A, will be beneficial for time trials and succeeding at heavy liftoffs. And this leads to the multitude of tricks which craft many combinations. On the rails or trees, you press Y to grind, and during your railing, you can press the other right hand buttons to rack up the score points and build more tricks to that list. This is all while you balance the board, of course. If you don't get used to it, don't worry. This atrocious level where you have to grind on trees like Disney's Tarzan is hell. Spent about 30 minutes on it, and I felt like a grinding master. Anywho, what's so cares? Then there are the aerial tricks that show off like a true ballet of the ages. Pressing multiple buttons whilst in the air will alter the maneuvers, but using the left stick lets you flip. Holding either of the bumper buttons, LB or RB, gives you that chance to shine in a still position. It's beautiful, but very risky. It'll leave you open to faltering when hitting the ground. When you're in the air, I will admit it feels heavy turning around, but it's not like SSX where it's completely arcade-like. It's improved in regards to Amped and Amped 2, but 2 and 3 are pretty close to each other in terms of great controls. The hang time is worth it due to multiplied points. Speaking of points, the more you keep on trucking and streaming with your tricks, the more the multiplier builds up and can lead to some high scores of unbelievability. When you are up and about the place, you have a style meter, and if you blow this gauge up, people will start to witness you and an objective arises, having to impress the audiences chilling on the mountains, gaining multiple fans. It's not really major and I never really engaged in it. You can always throw snowballs at other people though, that's always fun, but be warned, they do throw back. If you thought the game was just snowboarding, you are incorrect. Amp 3 introduces multiple vehicles. First, there's a snowmobile that's slippery, loose and incredibly fast. A bit too fast for my taste. It's great for going up hills in case you wanted to redo a certain stunt from a certain slope but can't get back up because there's no great fast travel. That was what I majorly used it for. And yeah, you can do tricks on it, but it's suicide. 50% is falling and crashing in air, or the other percentage is hoping you don't fall and die. 
I think it would have been better without this vehicle, it's unnecessary and I would have preferred a fast respawn system instead. Time attacks, skate relays and races are used within this mechanic and are mediocre at best. This skate relay, which is padded out, short in time and few and far between, was another annoying section of the game. 20 retries later and I got it done. It's so easy to fall off and controlling it to where you want it to go after landing on the snow is a challenge. You can use sleds, and I thought the snowmobile was bad. I think they designed this contraption to be horribly controlled because the main ordeal for this selection of minigames, you have to cause the largest amount of damage to your player. Kind of like skate before skate. You have to tap the trigger buttons to balance the sled, and when you want to plunder, you can flip or disengage. But there's more than one sled. The best one being the hang glider, which isn't exactly a sled, but it is fun flying high only to fall for eons, hearing your character scream the same screams for 10 minutes straight. It's the best mini game of them all, which leads me into the mini games, I guess. These mini games are scattered around the mountains and are these circular mission entrances. They vary from being real fun to tolerable to plain boring. There's a set of collecting missions like Kitty Cat Thing, collect all the coloured diamonds and poop and skulls before time runs out. These are alright but are definitely the most basic and you'll want to get the best gold medal run possible. There's gate relays which are fun depending on how the relay is structured. It could be designed to improve upon curving or angling your airtime correctly etc. Score attacks are great and can be easy or difficult depending on the area you are in. It tests your combo applying skills and I appreciate that thoroughly. There's snowmobile races which I mentioned previously and the sled minigames are the best out of the bunch. It keeps you occupied, especially for 100% completion if you want all the medals, bonus respect points and special equipment for clothing, brand sleds, objects and for the build mode system to implement them over the mountains you traverse on. But after finishing the game it is honestly best to just free roam and relax. There's nothing more satisfying than just breezing down the largest mountain without falling off and pulling off the best moves you could imagine. Out of all the paths upon this map, my favourite slope of snowboarding bliss is Snowbird. It's large, majestic, has multiple pathways to take, the morning time setting is beautiful, it leads to plenty of intricate sections to test your air and grind skills, and also leaves some breathing space to take some simple routes too. One thing I do recommend doing after beating the game is to start activating cheat codes. Yeah, you heard me. The only ones you need are for slow motion airtime, fast lips, unlocks for all tricks, and you are good to go for some exceptional magical snowboarding trickery. You won't get enough of it, I swear. Well, at least I didn't anyway. Now, I don't want to spoil the rest of the experience of Ant Free for you, but from what I've shown is basically what you get. And if I dared show the finale in the final cutscene of the game, it'd be rude of me to. So all I'll say is that I never expected a snowboarding game to include a musical number. Oh, I forgot to mention about the build mode. Um, I never used it at all. And that was Amp Free. It's not utterly perfect, but if I were to choose the best out of the trilogy, it would have to be Amp 2. But Amp Free, man, this is simply entertaining from a story and visual perspective, and the gameplay is constructed very tightly that I never got bored from its... Um, gameplay, but aside from a few repetitive missions, they kind of sunk it down a little. I recommend getting Amp 3, I recommend getting Amp 2, and you might as well get Amp 1 to finish off your collection. So, get them all. Simply put, get them all. And, as always, my name is James, these are my games, and I'll see you the next time as we're going to be looking at a sim clone known as... The herbs. Till then, bye bye.